Hi, well welcome to part two of tutorial 26 in this series of tutorials designed to help you learn easy language uh, programming, TradeStation easy language programming. If you haven't seen part one of this tutorial, I would suggest uh, looking at that before doing this tutorial because I explain some of the things in a little more detail. Um, just to, uh, to remind you, in the first part of the tutorial, we looked at finding divergences between price and stochastic and we looked at a low the low, the two low pivots here in this case where this low is actually lower than this one whereas the low of the stochastic pivot actually at this stochastic pivot low was actually greater than this one so we, we had a stochastic divergence with price and we drew the green line to to show that and I had a few people asking me well that's how you do um, the low pivots what about the high ones how can we write the program so that it will also show the, the stochastic divergences between high pivots and uh, here's an example of what I think they wanted to achieve and here you can see that the, uh, the, the high pivot of price makes a higher high and the high pivot of the stochastic actually makes a lower high. So that is what we're trying to achieve in this tutorial and I'm just going to uh, go through it and show you the changes that uh, we made. Uh, and incidentally, I've posted the actual ELD program on my site, which you can download for a nominal fee if you want to save yourself some typing. So let's just um, ignore the inputs and variables for the moment. Uh, we calculate the stochastic exactly as before. And this part of the program here, to see if there has been any pivots uh, in the low, any low pivots remains the same. But now we're also looking for high pivots in price and we made a few changes here firstly we've given them a new condition name we've called them 5 and 6 rather than 3 and 4 we've also changed this input price h and if we uh, if you just look up to the top of the program you'll see that we've set uh, price h to be an input and uh, initially i've set that to be high length left left strength right strength uh, remain the same 1 and 2 remain the same here because we're looking for high pivots we put 1 uh, here we were looking for low pivots, we put minus one. Also we've changed the uh, the variables here, O pivot price 5 is the actual price of the uh, the pivot point and O pivot bar 5 is the number of bars ago that it occurred. Similarly with condition 6 we've called it O pivot, pr pivot price 6 and O pivot bar 6 and make sure when you're writing the program that you add new variables for all of the new things that you're creating. Uh, or rather all the new variables you're creating. So the stochastic low pivots, that again remains exactly the same as in the previous program, but we're also looking for high pivots now. So um, the input O slow D stays the same, but uh, a couple of things change here. Firstly, the conditions, previously it was one and two, we're now calling this seven and eight. This is plus one because we're looking for high pivots. And then we've also created some variables, O pivot price seven and O pivot bar seven, which O pivot price seven is the actual uh, value of the pivot. And O pivot bar seven is the number of bars ago that that pivot occurred. So having done that, we then go and look and see if we actually do have a divergence. And the low side remains exactly the same as in the previous program. The high side, however, has changed. What we're now looking for is condition 5, 6, 7 and 8 must be true. In other words, we've had two recent high pivots in price and two recent high pivots in the stochastic. We're also looking, and this I explained in a lot more detail in the uh, the last tutorial, was that the, um, the uh, pivot in the price and the pivot in the stochastic have got to be within a certain tolerance number of bars away from each other for this to be valid. And similar for a pivot bar 8 and 6 being the not the most recent but the next most uh, recent pivots. Uh, then we say that either we need to have just discovered a new pivot in price or a new pivot in the stochastic and we do that by setting um, O pivot bar 5 equals right strength or O pivot bar uh, or I shouldn't say setting, we do that by testing whether O pivot bar 5 equals right strength or O pivot bar 7 equals right strength. And then we actually look for the um, divergence and in this case what we're looking for is the most recent high price pivot is greater than the next most recent price high pivot while at the same time the most recent 
uh, high pivot in the stochastic is actually less than the previous uh, high pivot in the stochastic and also just the same as before bar status 1 equals 2 which means we're only going to do this at the end of the bar and if all that uh, is actually true we then draw a line and um, uh, a few differences here again in this case we're drawing the line at the highs and also we're, dra we're drawing it O pivot bar 6 and O pivot bar 5 ago so it could be that you um, this is, that O pivot bar 6 is not the most recent um, pivot but because that's talking about a high pivot there may be uh, a low pivot there uh, in between but this we're, we're talking high here and we draw the line between H O pivot bar 6 and H O pivot bar 5 and uh, I've also changed the color of it to be red. So again, um, this is, as always, not designed to be a tradable indicator, but really something to help you learn TradeStation easy language programming skills. Uh, if you're not on our email database, then please sign up, and then I'll be uh, very happy to let you know when I create more tutorials. And as I mentioned, if you wanted to uh, save yourself some typing, I've also posted this program on the site and uh, you can download it for a nominal fee. Thank you.